It's 9.30, Sunday morning. I'm still in Ulster, in the West Midlands, and I'm heading off to Ragley Hall in a moment to do my talk to uh, all the scouts at the camp. But I'm having real issues today. <laughs> You can see um, I've been putting all the weight on for my ocean row and my zip keeps coming undone. <laughs> so I think my mission this week is going to be to go and do a lot more swimming and go to the gym. I need to keep my weight up ready for rowing around Britain but I'm sick and tired of not being able to wear trousers and, and wear clothes and zips coming open uh, especially when you're doing talks uh, to young children. So I think my mission this week will be to try and just lose a little bit, uh, just enough that my flies won't keep coming open. So uh, time to head off now. <laughs> it's really strange being four stone heavier than I used to be. Looks like it will be a nice day again. Looking outside, there's the uh, McDonald's on the roundabout and the road. Sun shining. Looks maybe a little bit more windy than yesterday, but still quite nice. Got my shorts on today. Got my backpack all sorted, all packed, my Stanley mug full of tea, my phone, right, I think we've got everything. Just waiting for my taxi now. I've had a little lull in between my talks and I popped over to the Institute of Engineering and Technology, their little stand, and I have just made myself a torch, uh, like this. There we go. Pretty cool, pretty easy to make. You take um, two batteries, a little pin with a light on the end, and then you put it inside there. The batteries have to be facing the same direction. And then the longer end of the pin uh, touches one side and then you put the plastic on the outside, clip it together a sticker and you can make your own torch. Uh, which is a really cool activity for getting young people involved in kind of nanotechnology and um, engineering. I'm pretty chuffed with that. <laughs> I'm easily pleased. <laughs> and it's great because the scout can actually get their electronics badge. So they're learning really good things. Andy, just got a lift down the big road. Perfect. Perfect timing. Time to head home. Leaving Wilmcorp Station and headed to Birmingham. Uh, to Birmingham Moor Street and then from Birmingham Moor Street to Birmingham New Street. Birmingham New Street north to Oxenholm and then back up to Kendall. It's a really pretty little station though. It looks quite different in the daytime from when I arrived at night. You can really smell the blossom. So many flowers and it's really rural. It's not what you expect 20 miles outside of Birmingham. It's a really nice little place. I learned today that Wilmcote was home to a lady called Mary Arden, who I hadn't really heard of before. I wasn't sure, not knowing that much about British history or anything like that and I discovered today that she was the mother of William Shakespeare. So one of the things that Wilmcote is famous for is Mary Arden's house. There we go, you can see it on the, the train sign as well. So if you're interested in Shakespeare, then come to Wilmcote and go and visit Mary Arden's house. I really love all the local names. So you've got Stratford-on-Avon, famous for Shakespeare, Helly and Arden, Whitlock's End, Shirley, Acox Green, obviously Birmingham, Rowley Regis, Cradley Heath, Stourbridge, Worcester, and lots of other funny little names. I'm not sure where they come from. Um, I think it's quite a Roman area historically. Um, but uh, I'd love to know more about where the names come from. You can see more of them here. Wooden Warwen. <laughs> Danzy, 
Withal, Whitlock's End, Yardley Wood, um, Alton, Widney, Dorridge. Really interesting. I think there's a train coming now. It's going quite fast though, so it might not be mine. the best thing about coming home the welcoming party attack from all angles. Ow, you got really sharp claws. You've got sharp claws. What are you doing? Hey. I think I was missed. Madhouse. 